Hello YouTube. So, Fontaine is finally here, and with it, we have Lenny, the first ever 5 star released for the region. So today, we will be taking a theory crafting analysis look into Lenny's teams and his numbers. With that said, let's jump right into this. Now, I won't go in depth about Lenny's kit and what he does, because this isn't a full guide, it's just a theory crafting analysis on his teams and numbers. But to summarize, Lenny is a charged shot based bow DPS. And he gets a ton of buffs from his passives and his weapon for going with the triple pyro team. So because of this, you'll want the car of your team to be Lenny and Bennett. For the other two slots, you can pick between a third pyro unit and a Nemo unit or a shielder. For your third pyro unit, the options I recommend are either Zhongling, Xinyan, Yanfei, or Dia. Zhongling will always be the highest damage option, but if your fourth slot isn't a shielder, you may find the team difficult to play. This is why Xinyan, Yanfei, and Dia are the other recommendations. They consolidate the role of being a third pyro unit, while also helping you get avoid getting interrupted. Dia isn't a shielder, but she provides 9 seconds of infinite interruption resistance. She can also buff with the tenacity set. While this is nice, it can run into some issues. Dia's skill has a 20 second cooldown, so you'll either be locked into doing a 20 second minimum rotation, or using Sacrificial Greatsword to get around the cooldown. If you do use Sacrificial, then that means you can't use her on the Aquamarine Claymore for buffing, or you can't use her on Favonius for better team energy. Additionally, because Dia's interruption buff only lasts 9 seconds, you'll want to use her right before Lenny. This means that you won't be able to use your Anemo unit right before Lenny, so depending on the exact rotation, you may lose some VP uptime. Yantfei at C4 brings a pretty strong shield, and she can buff with Drilling Tails. This can be really nice, but it also comes with some issues. Her forced cooldown and Thrilling Tails both force you to run a 20 second rotation. Like with Dia, you also have to use Yanfei right before Lenny for Thrilling Tails, which can lead to less VV uptime. Also, Yanfei cannot use the Tenacity set unlike the other options, which means she's actually only providing 28% more attack compared to them, meaning Thrilling Tails isn't as big as you would think. Despite, th despite this, she does still make a pretty good option. Lin Xinyan, in my opinion, is the best option if you want to go with a Pyro Shielder. She can buff with Tenacity just like Dia, and her shield lasts 12 seconds, so you can use her before your Nemo unit and still have good shield uptime for Linny. She can also freely use Favonius, which she is guaranteed to proc at Constellation 2, to provide better team energy economy. Also, her cooldowns are shorter than that of Dia and Yanfei, so you can run shorter rotations without any issues with her. Plus, you can space out her skill and bar staff for shield up for the entire rotation, which can be very nice when ensuring your supports do not get interrupted either. Alternatively, instead of using a Pyro Shielder, you can use Zhongli. Zhongli doesn't consolidate the role of Pyro and Shielder, but the buffs he provides can make up for it. If you are going to use him, I would make, recommend you take advantage of him by using Zhongli as your fourth unit, or just use a grouper as your an, an Nemo grouper for, as your fourth slot. And speaking of Anemo, the Anemo units I recommend are Kazuha, Venti, or Lynette. Kazuha provides grouping and buffing, which will usually result in the highest damage, but his higher fill time requirements will often lead to longer rotations, and sometimes this will cause lower DPS. Venti provides continuous grouping and refunds 15 energy to all your pyro units. It will usually be less damage than Kazuha, but the combination of lower fill time and energy refund can result in higher DPS. Plus, this continuous grouping will often just be better than Kazuha's. And then Lynette provides some grouping with her C1 and Taunting. Her Taunt can also be pretty useful for helping you avoid getting hit, thus can allow Lynette to be used in place of a shielder, so essentially acting as an Anemo shielder. But keep in mind, however, that Taunts usually don't work against Barsis, so if you're in a single target boss situ situation against an aggressive boss, she may not be ideal. So, let's show some math, some math to see in more detail how these units compare to each other. For reference, the numbers I will be showing are with a C0 R1 Lenny, all 4 stars at C6, on 4 star weapons, then the other 5 star units on the team at C0 on a 4 star weapon, and all units are triple crowned. 
So first we have the numbers for how all the pyro units compare to each other with Kazuha as the Anima unit. As we can see, Zhongling is massively ahead of the Shielders and Dia, being 20% ahead of Xing Yan. But keep in mind all the caveats that we mentioned earlier. Then Xing Yan is slightly ahead of Yanfei and Dia, whom are very similar to each other. The difference between the three power options is very small, so ultimately you can just use whichever one you want to cut you want to use or whichever one you have. Let's analyze the rotations as well. Keep in mind that I don't have Lenny, so it's possible there is something that I overlooked or that these rotations could be optimized better. But you will see that for all these all of these, Lenny is doing either 2CA QE CA as his combo or 2CA QE. The reason for this is Lenny's charge shot, based on my testing in his test run, takes roughly 2.5 seconds and this QE about 3.5 seconds. So if the rotation calls for him to do a 9 second combo, I use 2CA QE. Or for the 11 second, or if he needs 11 seconds to fill time, then I'll do 2CA QE CA. There's a CA after the E with the 3CA rotation, because otherwise you just be standing there waiting to catch your particles. That, and often some of your buffs will be expired by that point. Your QE is your nuke, so it may be better to have your buffs expired on the CA instead of QE. As for the numbers with Venti, although Lenny's damage is lower here compared to with Kazuha, as mentioned, the DPS was able to go up for most of these teams due to the combination of rotation time and energy refund. With Xinyan, you can save 2 seconds off the rotation compared to with Kazuha by skipping Xinyan's skill and just using her burst for her shield. You miss out on her far product pyro particles by doing this. This isn't an issue with Venti providing 15 energy refund. And with Dia, pairing her with Venti allows Lenny to do 3 CA in the same rotation time that he does too with Kazuha. As for Lynette, the numbers with her are surprisingly competent compared to Kazuha and Venti, mainly due to rotational differences. However, do keep in mind that her grouping isn't quite as good as Kazuha and Venti. But like I mentioned, she also provides a taunt that is excellent at keeping enemies attention. So she can make using Zhongling much more practical compared to the other two, while only being slightly behind Kazuha in DPS. We can still get hit if enemies attack the taunt, but their hit hits still reach you, so you will need to be careful to make sure you are moving away from the enemy's attacks. And do also keep in mind, like I said earlier, taunts usually won't work against Varsis. And then also, here's the numbers and rotations with the Zhongli. For playing Lenny with a shielder, Shankly provides very competent numbers due to either allowing a shorter rotation with Kazuha or Venti, or allowing you to use Zhongling while shielded. Using Lynette will be the stronger way to play Zhongling with Lenny, but Zhongli will be more comfortable if you still find it hard to play with Lynette, and he's also going to work against Varsis, which Lynette will not. So to summarize, the strongest team for Lenny is Lenny, Venet, Zhongling, Kazuha, but you may find it very hard to play without a shielder. If you get interrupted out of a charge shot, you will lose a massive amount of damage. You can use Lynette instead of Kazuha for only slightly less DPS and weaker grouping, but in exchange, make it way easier to avoid getting hit. Then you can also just go full comfort by using one of the shield options alongside a grouper. Now that we have his teams covered, let's go over his constellations. Once again, this isn't the full Lenny guide, it's just a TC analysis, so I won't go in depth on what his constellations do, but I will give a brief summary. C1 lets two hats exist at the same time, and it will make his first CA give him an extra stack. C2 gives him ramping crit damage up to 60%. C3 increases his auto attack levels by 3, which is the first we've ever seen this. C4 is 20% pyro shred. C5 is his burst plus 3. C6 gives us a coordinated charge attack on all his prop arrows. C1 is amazing not only because it's a massive 15% increase to your damage, but also because it gives you the ability to front load damage faster. For instance, if you want to front load damage, you could do Lenny CA QE and have one prop arrow, three hats, as well as your Q plus a three stack E all in around five seconds. That's a lot of front loaded damage. 15% is also a very big increase for a unit that does the amount of damage that he does, and it's a very big increase compared to a lot of other character C1s as well. Overall, I'd give his C1 a 5 out of 5 if I were to rate it. C2 doesn't need much explaining why so much crit damage would be amazing. 
It's about a 33% increase over C0 and a 15% increase over C1. So it's about a very good constellation. I would give this a 5 out of 5, just like a C1. Then C3, most of his damage comes from his auto attack with his charged attacks, so this is very good. 47% increase over C0 and 10% over C2. I'd give this one a 4 out of 5. C4, 60% increase over C0, about 9-10% to over C3. The value of resistance shred is halved below 0%, so since we already have the V shred, it's no surprise that this comes out to around 9-10%. So I would also give this about a 4 out of 5 rating. C5 is his only underwhelming constellation. It's only about a 64% increase over C0 and 2% over his previous constellation C4, so... Only 2% increase, I would give this a 1 out of 5 rating. Then C6 is absolutely incredible. It's a 99% increase over C0, 22% over C over C5. So I would also give this a 5 out of 5. It's his damage from C from C0 to C6 is almost literally doubled. So overall, his constellations are absolutely incredible. Having percentile increases this high on a unit that does as much damage as Lenny is super hard. If you are looking for an early stopping point for vertical investment into Lenny, anywhere between C1 to C3 is going to be great. Now let's talk about his weapons. His signature weapon, the first grade magic, is going to be his, be his best weapon. It's about 7% ahead of the next best 5 star weapon, and a massive 20% ahead of the most recommended 4 star weapon. The second best 5 star weapon is Aqua Simulacra, assuming you are within the range for its passive. A 7% difference is pretty noticeable on a unit that does so much damage, but it's still strong enough for, of an alternative. If you don't have the first great grab magic or Aqua, then you will want to use either Thundering Pulse, Skyward Harp, or Polo Star. Hope and Harp and Polo Star will be a lot harder to use because they give crit rate. The Lenny set gives 36% crit rate, plus he ascends with crit rate. So you will be at a massive risk of overcapping. If you overcap on crit rate, then these weapons value will go down significantly. Prototype Crescent at R5 is his highest damage far star weapon if you have its passive. But I'm not a fan of this weapon because needing to hit a weak spot doesn't seem reliable. Amos Bow was the next best weapon after Crescent, assuming you get two stacks of his passive for charged attack. And the next best weapon is the B is the new BP weapon at R5 and the new forgeable weapon at R5 as well. I don't really recommend going for the battle pass bow, so if you're going to use a 4 star weapon on Lenny, the one I recommend the most is the forgeable. The damage increase from that to the first great magic or aqua is so massive that if you are serious about being a Lenny main, it is highly advisable to go for one of those two weapons. Now let's look over his artifacts real quick. The hunter set is his best set by a massive margin, and you should absolutely farm this set for him. If you need to use a set if you need a set to use on him in the meantime while you're farming on it, you can use four piece lava walkers, two piece two piece, or four piece troop. But I would absolutely only use those temporarily until you get a hunter set. Even an underwhelming hunter set should be better than a guild alternative set. To put it into perspective, even if I remove eight crit damage substats from Lenny on the hunter set, and keep all the stats on the alternatives, the hunter set is still ahead. And with that said, the last thing I want to cover is how I would grade him for my 5 star tier list. If you aren't familiar with my 5 star tier list, I would recommend checking out that video. But basically, I grade 5 stars on a scale of 1 to 10 based on how good they are in the following categories. DPS that's supporting, single target, AoE, multi-wave, vertical scaling, shield check, the accessibility slash flexibility. So here is the score I would give Lenny. DPS are supporting, 10 out of 10. Single target, 10 out of 10. AoE, 6 out of 10. Multi-wave, 6 out of 10. Water goal, 10 out of 10. Shield check, 5 out of 10, because he's walled by pyro and hydro shields. Accessibility, flexibility, 6 out of 10. So overall, that would add up to a score of 53, putting him into A tier. But to conclude, when he does a lot of damage, even while having both a shielder and a grouper, and he does not need a lot of fill time to do so. His AoE is not great, but he does have some good AoE with his skill and burst, and you also have Kazuha or Binti to add some AoE, some AoE grouping and damage. If you are dedicated enough and have high enough skill to play Lenny without a shielder, 
and this team will have higher output than basically every other team at the same level of investment thanks to Zhao Guiyin. So you will be highly rewarded for your skill expression if you can play him without a shield word. But overall, he is a really good DPS and a good pick if you are looking for a new strong DPS to play. And yeah, that's about all for today. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe. Please also be sure to comment down below letting me know your thoughts. Thanks. Bye.